Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to Born to Shine being brought to you by Genius Kids. I'm Miss Rainu from Genius Kids. Happy to be here every Wednesday evening where I bring you one of the most interesting shows because in this show, Born to Shine, we believe that there's so many kids out there that are born to shine. And when I talk about born to shine, I'm not just talking about the academics. We all know that children are, of course, always great at academics, but we want to know what else do they do? Where else do they shine? And those are the kids we want to spotlight. So if you know anyone out there between the ages of five to 25 that's doing something special, be it giving back to the community, sports, music, anything, anything non-academic that I want to hear from you. And yes, you can nominate yourself if you want. If you're a kid listening to the show, you can nominate yourself or you can have someone nominate you. And yes, mom and dad, feel proud to nominate your own child. And every week we feature wonderful children that are doing amazing stuff. I call them kids because they're kids for me, even though they feel, some of them feel they're young adults, like the young lady we have today. So first of all, thanks to Radio Zindagi for giving us this platform to always be able to showcase and give opportunities to kids. So thank you, Sarba, thank you, Neeraj, and of course, thank you, Ira, my favorite, RJ. And today, let's begin our show. We're gonna be spotlighting this young lady called Sana Jaya Varapu. Did I say that right, Sana? Pretty close, yes. Good job, okay. I managed to say that because with my dyslexia, when I see so many A's all together, I'm sure I'm going to miss one. So Definitely one hard. On show, I've known you since you were a little munchkin. So tell me a little bit about what you currently do, Sana. So currently I'm a sophomore at Foothill High School. Um, I'm involved in quite a few things, um, but most of them involve uh, volunteering and giving back to the community, especially with children and um, vulnerable communities. And um, some things I like to do on my own, I love to read, dance and sing. I'm a classical dancer as well as a Carnatic singer. Yes, I know. You've been on the student council, uh, Scripps Research. What's Scripps Research? Let's talk about that. What's that? So Scripps Research, um, they had a biology camp um, last year. They were, um, it was right when COVID was hitting and they were able to make it uh, virtual. And we had a one week seminar on how to um, do our own experiments from the comforts of our home. It was meant to be in person, but of course, due to COVID, it all went virtual. And at the end, we presented our findings and it was really like a talk to um, people that we knew and we presented our findings like a real scientist and it was really fun. Um, and we got to do it with partners and um, other people who, all around the world. And it was a great experience for me. And I think that is one of the main reasons I know that I want to go into the science field, um, which is my what goal. Was your, what was your experiment about? So we did a yeast lab. Everybody did um, the same lab. And we were trying to grow yeast um, mm. in different um, in conditions and with different materials. Like we use grape juice and the um, fr fridge and outside, different locations, different things to grow it oh, in. Cool. Okay. And um, some were successful, some were not as successful, but we presented all our findings and it was very official like. Very well, fun. I love science. I'm a scientist too. I love anything that's hands on and that's why it brings you to cooking. So hopefully you're a good cook as well. Kind of more of a, I like pastries more and baking. Oh yeah, I love pastries. Yes. Absolutely. And then of course you've been a lead in training in the, you've been in the badminton club, Indian Carnatic singing and a classical dancer. Wonderful. And then on top of that, you have the awards you've got is Girl Scout Silver Award. You've got a citizenship award. That means you're very well behaved, right? Yes. Yes. One of my teachers nominated me. Um, have you ever been ago. in timeout? I'm curious to know. N no, no, uh, only by my mother when I was a very little kid. <laughs> <laughs> only by your mom? What? Yes. And then, of course, you made principal's list as well. So congratulations. Lots of interesting things. So looking at your uh, CV, I know you have uh, always done lots and lots of things for the for the community. So let's talk about, I'm interested to know what is inclusive world? So that's actually one of the favorite, my, one of my favorite organizations that I work with. Mm -hmm. um, inclusive world is a organization, a nonprofit that works with um, students and children, uh, especially teenagers with special needs and other disabilities. Mm -hmm. And we work, um, 
to teach them different skills in the uh, places that they're interested in. We have different classes like the software testing, which is where I currently um, work and um, arts and crafts, other things that teach them different skills like business management and um, it's just coding for the software testing classes. Um, and when, we, when they get to a certain age, we help them find a job as well as prepare for the interviews so that they can really reach their true potentials in, their, in the fields that they're interested in. That's wonderful. Where did you do this? Is it here, right here, local? Yes, so it's in, um, they have an Eastbury branch as well as the Southbury branch. Um, we, the Eastbury branch re started really recently, like a year or two ago, and that's when I found out about them. Um, but yeah, that's when I started volunteering with them, I think two years ago. That's wonderful. And then, of course, we also have the Common Humanity Collective. You were an intern there. What was that all about? So the Common Humanity Collective, we just recently um, started. So it was a it's a COVID relief um, mutual aid organization. Currently, we I started volunteering with them back in October. Mm -hmm. um, and currently we make masks as well as personal protective equipment for free for any community, any people who oh. reach out and want um, masks. And we've delivered uh, over 50,000, 60,000 masks to different wow. people. Wow, so you're actually making these masks as well? Yes, so I'm currently a kit um, coordinator. So we package these L supplies for the masks and we send them to volunteers to make them. And then they come back to us and we check them and then we send them out. That is absolutely amazing. 50,000. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. I think when you send the CV to me, you were at 30 and now we're at 50. So we need to yes. update. Yes, it has been updated. <laughs> so now let's talk about one of your most, I know you they're all your favorite, but one in particular is the, I want to make sure I say this right, the Mithil Prasad Foundation. Yes, it's a, one of uh, my other favorite organizations that I work with. It's the organization that I'm definitely the most involved in currently. So the Middle Prasad Foundation, it's, um, I'll talk a little bit behind the name first. Yes. So Mithil Prasad, um, he was a uh, young, energetic, really caring boy um, who I unfortunately did not get the chance to meet. Um, he was dif diagnosed with diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma or DIPG. And wow. um, so that is the deadliest pediatric brain tumor on um, earth, basically. So there have been no survivors for it. And the median survival time they're given is usually about nine months. Um, but a lot wow. of kids are affected by it. And he passed away a few years ago. How um, old was he when he passed away? I believe he was um, 13, so four years 13? ago. So he lasted yes. long, a long time. Yes, oh, so he was, okay. I believe he was diagnosed in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and he, um, after he passed away, after they, the family took some time, they decided to, um, in honor of him, they decided to create a foundation on his name and through the foundation, they have been raising funds for DIPG research to try and find a cure, as well as help patients and their families, because the hospital bills are crazy and not every family is as fortunate to have all that money for mm -hmm. um, those hospital bills. And honestly, I praise that family so much because even after all that, they have been able to put aside their grief and try and help other families and try mm. and stop them from going through what they had to go through. And I think that's really inspiring. It really so is, yeah. They, wow. And through the foundation, we have raised over $300,000 in the past three years for our cause. Wow. And what made you, I mean, how did you hear about this organization? Is it local? So I knew from one of our friends is... Um, the sister of Mithil, uh, Rachna Prasad, um, she was talking about her foundation and her events. And um, we started going and I want, wanted to volunteer. And I re really, really got interested in DIPG and the cause. And I got really deeply connected to it so much so that we actually recently started a youth chapter, me and Rachna, and that I'm the director of right now. Wonderful, so it's local, it's locally based. Yes, so they are in San Jose and we, okay. um, yes. Wow, 
That's amazing. And it is, it is, I mean, if somebody can overcome the grief, I mean, I don't think you have overcome a loss of a loved one, but if you're able to, you know, create something in their memory and put money back to yes. a good cause, that's great. So how did you manage to raise funds during COVID? How has that been? So actually um, we haven't, um, so this December, I believe, mm -hmm. we have an annual gala um, around Mithil's birthday um, and we had it virtual this year. We've had it in person previous years, but this year we had it virtually and we had a different performances. It was really great. And um, that was one way we raised a lot of money. And we actually have an event coming up, the first youth chapter event on May 16th from four to 6 p.m. We're having a paint night um, to raise funds um, for the cause. And oh, we'll also that's have the one with Ranjani. Yes, oh, and Miss Ranjani, Miss yes. Ranjani is leading a kids workshop for first through third graders right before the event. So um, the whole family can join for the main event, and then kids get the chance to make their own painting right before. That's wonderful. Yes, I did see that posting out there. So maybe you can give that information for all our listeners. So for those who've tuned in, you're listening to Born to Shine being brought to you by Genius Kids. I'm Miss Renu, and today we're spotlighting Sana ja Jayavarapu, and she is talking about all the different organizations that she is involved in. She's actively involved in so many different things. And we're gonna to get to how she finds the time to do that in a few minutes. And one of her favorite organizations is Mithil Prasad Foundation and they're having an event. She is the director of the local youth chapter. So go ahead, Sana, give some information of how people can reach you if they wanna get their kids involved. Is there a charge for the competition? I mean, is it a competition? Is it just a spotlight talent show? What exactly is it? So it's just a paint night, no competition or anything like okay. that. Basically, um, what will happen is you can pay for the ticket. Um, that is how we will be raising our funds for from the event. And then on top of that, any donations are greatly appreciated. So um, the ticket comes with a paint kit. So we will provide all the supplies to make your very own painting. And if you get the children's workshop ticket, you get access to the ch children's workshop as well as an extra canvas to make that painting as well. And you can paint the painting during the event from four to six. And during that time, we'll also have performances from local students. Um, who are showing off their talent. We have some great performances that I've seen. And then we'll also have some talks on DIPG so you, and the foundation to learn a little bit more about them. And then after the event is over, we'll be recollecting all the paintings and donating them to DIPG patients and their families, just to put a smile on their face. That's wonderful. Is this gonna be a virtual event or is it in person? Virtual, completely virtual. We wanted to be able to um, keep people safe, but still have fun. So basically um, people can join from anywhere they want. You could be yes. sitting. Yeah. How would they get their supplies then if the supplies are included? How are you going to do that? So currently we're trying to keep it in California, mm -hmm. um, but um, anybody can attend if they just purchase and What's a the uh, registration to attend? It's 25 for a normal ticket. I think that's great. And, you know, even if you don't live in California, $25 is not much to go out and get your, you know, contributed and you can easily go to Michael's and pick up your own supplies for less than five bucks. Even the canvas exactly. is cost more than like four, three, four dollars and paint can be used again. So that's a great cause. And is there any theme to what they have to paint the kids or can they paint anything they want? Uh, there's no paint, um, anything like that. But what we will provide is a bio for the um, child that it's going to. So it'll list some of their interests and you can take into account that for a little inspiration for your painting or not. It's totally up to you, but it's just a little guide if you wanted to. That's great. And uh, where can they register again? So registration can be found at the middleprasadfoundation.org um, and under the youth chapter. And if you scroll down, there'll be a paint, sign up for a paint night at the bottom or you can find the link directly to the um, paint night registration on our Facebook, Mithil Prasad Youth Chapter, or our Instagram at Mithil MPF Youth Chapter. Okay, great. And go ahead and spell Mithil Prasad too, so people know how to spell that. Yes, um, Mithil Prasad is M-I-T-H-I-L, and then Prasad, P-R-A-S-A-D. Great. Well, this is wonderful. So my next question to a young lady like you who's in high school, um, I mean, how do you find time to do all of this? You have all these organizations, you have your badminton. Have you been playing badminton during COVID or was that canceled? 
Yeah, actually, we just recently got clearance like about a month ago to play in person. And we have been having um, in-person games with some of our members. And it's been really fun. I think that's like one of my um, best um, exercises that I've been get getting because I get to have fun with some of my friends. And yes. It's not forced or anything. So how um, do you manage to balance this and do homework and uh, be a younger sister to a big sister and be a daughter to a mom and dad. How do you do all of this stuff? It's This is called time management. And I didn't realize that high school kids even knew the concept of time management. I thought they spend most of the time on, um, what is it? Snapchat? Is that what everybody <laughs> goes on? <laughs> yes. So, so I, I, I am I a- Facebook. Facebook is dated for you guys. You're like, no. Facebook? No, it's on Facebook, yeah. A little bit. Um, so I'm a re very pre-planned um, time management person. I like everything to be done before it has to be done. And I, that's how I've gotten this far, honestly. Um, I, I make sure that everything is done before it has to be done. At least if I get a, a, an advance notice that something has to be done, I plan out my time for that, which is why I think that it works best for me. And that's how I've been getting all this stuff done. And I still have the time to go on Snapchat and watch TV and Netflix. <laughs> so, so how does a young lady like you learn time management? Um, how, how do I learn time management? Yeah. Who, so, who's super organized? Did you learn it from a parent at home or did you just, is it just within yourself to do it? Um, I think my mom is a little bit of a, a similar to me, but it also is in me a little bit. I think it's a little bit from both. Um, I'm also a perfectionist a little bit. So there, that part also times in. So, yeah. That's great. And what do you aspire to be? I mean, have you decided or is it too early to ask? You mentioned- No, I, so. yes, I do want to go into the uh, medical field, pediatric medicine in um, specific. Um, I don't know a specialty or anything yet, but I do, do, I do want to go that path. And how did, uh, I'm curious to know as a high schooler, you know, how did COVID impact the lives of a high schooler. Did you think, uh, do you want to go back to school or do you think you've got used to the whole virtual learning and that's pretty cool? Because I've talked to some kids and they just like, you know, some kids just hate it and some love it. What are your thoughts on this whole uh, concept of virtual learning? So right now I have um, only three hours of school a day, three classes a day instead okay. of six. Um, so my schedule has changed a lot from a normal school year which I think if I went back to a normal school day, I would prefer to go um, in person. Mm -hmm. But if I only had three classes and I, I get out really early, I don't think I would want to go in person um, because it's just not very practical, I believe. Uh, but I do prefer, I would really like to go back in person. Um, do you eventually. think uh, learning online has been, uh, I mean, easier for high schoolers versus the younger kids because you have more discipline or do you think it's been difficult? I think it is easier for high schoolers compared to um, the little kids, especially because um, we've been trained, I guess, to focus for that long, especially through middle school. I think that's mm -hmm. um, like the prime time that you learn to sit down and actually work for that long. Right. Whereas younger kids don't have that. And high schoolers, there's a lot of things that we can be forced to do and we get grades that matter. Um, whereas to younger kids, grades are just a letter on a paper. Right. So I think there are definitely um, factors that make high schoolers need to pay more attention in school versus the younger kids. But I, um, but it's hard on everybody. It's and definitely. what's your take on, um, for example, I mean, I, you have a great resume. I mean, you know, um, I always tell parents that it's so important to start building your resume, your background and all your attributes for college, you know, because I think academics, yes, is great. And people want to look at the GPA scores, but I think colleges look at a lot more. So what's your message out to parents out there who don't encourage their children to do all these extracurricular activities? What's your message out there to them? Honestly, if you're interested in it, you should definitely go for it, but you shouldn't be pushed into anything for sure. And it's, you definitely shouldn't do it for college and for your resume for sure. But um, if you're interested in it, it's definitely, definitely worth it. I've had so many great experiences and I've met so many 
great people that any work and issues that come up have just I've pushed past them just because of the people and the experiences that those places have given me. And if I were to ask you one thing you think you've learned from being involved in a couple of these organizations, uh, what do you, what would your takeaways be from a couple of these things that you've done? I think the main thing is that you can never, you should never judge a book by its cover. And I think that really um, shows through the Middle Process Foundation and the inclusive world, um, especially inclusive world, because the people that I've met there, they're so, so smart and they think so much um, at such higher levels than me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we work one on one with people there. So um, my buddy is just he has the best memory ever. And he's he just thinks so much better than me. And not I he thinks he has great thoughts, which um, I think is, I would have never expected. Um, and I don't mean that in a mean way or anything like that, but I just definitely think that um, one thing that I've learned out, out of all these years in all these places is that you definitely shouldn't judge anybody based on what you see. Absolutely. And I think I always strongly believe being an educator that, you know, there's no such thing as a perfect human being. And also, I don't even believe in anything called normal. I don't believe there's any normalcy in anything. We all have a little quirks within ourselves. And if a child has some special needs, that just means they're a little different and they need little extra support maybe to help them learn. But, you know, if we look back into history, um, some of the most talented musicians, inventors, have been people with special needs, you know? So absolutely. You know, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. I mean, I I can't even believe the time has gone by so fast. So what's your message out there? I know Miss Ranjani recommended you and uh, nominated you for the show. What's your message out there to everyone today? What do you want people to remember Sana for? Um, I definitely would love to ask everybody to sign up for the event if you do have a chance. And um, one thing I would like everybody to remember is that last message that we were just talking about to never judge anybody by their cover. And I think that's just the greatest thing ever. Absolutely. And we still have one more minute. So go ahead and provide quick information again as a reminder to everybody on your upcoming event for the Mithil Prasad Foundation. Yes. So the Mithil Prasad Foundation, we're ho hosting a paint night on May 16th from 4 to 6 p.m. All supplies will be provided with the ticket. And the registration can be found at mithoprasadfoundation.org under the, the youth chapter um, at the bottom of the page. And um, I think I would like to thank everybody for your support. And I would like to thank Ms. Venu as well as Radio Sindhiki for this great opportunity. Thank you so much. It's actually, we should be thanking you. It's a, such a pleasure to meet such a delightful young lady who's so full of confidence. You know, I'm all about confidence and communication and you've truly yes. proven to me that I, I think one of these days, um, you know, considering we have Vice President uh, Kamala Harris now, I think uh, that's opened up the path for ladies like yourself now. And yes. hopefully someday I'll be able to say, I interviewed that young lady when, and when you'll be president of something someday. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you so uh. much and uh, best wishes. And of course, special thanks to Ms. Ranjani for your hard work and contribution to the event as well. And of course, to your mom and your family for kudos for raising such a wonderful young lady. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll see you guys next week with Born to Shine. Back to Radio Zindagi.